PLC Network here with another unboxing, this time coming from a company called LightMe. And what we have here is the LightMe Neo Sync Box and TV Backlight Kit. It is an ambient backlight solution for your TV with HDMI 2.0 support for up to 4K at 60 hertz. That's a big one. We'll get to that in a second though. But what that does, this gets you up to speed with most modern 4K content outside of some Xbox Series X gaming scenarios since the new console can deliver up to 120 hertz. But that only limits their niche so much. I mean, most kits only offer up to 4K at 30 hertz. So this is still kind of better. It works with any TV size up to 90 inches between two kit options, including 60 inches and below and 61 inches and above. This is more than just an ambient light solution. This actually uses HDMI to mimic the colors around the edges of the image on the screen and updates them as they change. Kind of like a color bleed off to the walls past the edge of the screen, making for a really interesting effect. You add it in line between your source and your TV and it will determine all of this using the HDMI connection. You can control the light either via the app or via Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. I mean, it has a lot going for it compared to some of the other options out there. And the price point isn't too bad either, although it varies depending on which kit you get between the two. And we'll make sure to have links in the description, of course. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna open this box up. We're gonna take a look to see what comes inside. What is all involved with this? And then maybe we'll connect it to a TV and see what it actually looks like. And then of course you go to the website later on at plcnetwork.net where we'll talk about this and let you know what we think once we've actually spent some time with it between movies, TV, video games, or whatever else we decide to throw at it. Just not Xbox at 120 hertz because, well, your pass-through is now limited to 60. Which again, not bad, because most of these are limited to 30, so that puts this one in a good place. So let's go ahead and open it up. And the first thing you, you're brought to is your manual. You're gonna wanna take a look at this and uh, you know get an idea of how everything goes together. It's relatively simple, so it's not too bad. And whoo, that smell you get from any LED strip lights that have this 3M adhesive double stick tape on the back. It is incredibly powerful. So you'll want to air this out outside, outside maybe for an hour before you actually open it up and start sticking it to your TV. But that aside, you do have different types of pretty much guides that you can put on the back of your TV. What this is, the whole system is built upon two LED strip lights that are gonna run, run around your TV. Starts in the corner, one goes up the side and across the top, and the other one goes across the bottom and up the other side. So these help guide them around your TV with. You have your side or just straight angles here. So what it does is just sticks to the TV and then the LED strip runs through it. And then you have the corner brackets or, or pieces, which pretty much go into the corner of the TV like this. And then the LED strip runs around and it just helps guide it around the corner. So you have a nice fluid kind of pathway all the way around the TV that's consistent without any kind of weird corners or anything like that no having to fold anything, which is important because some, sometimes you gotta sit there and try to fold it on top itself to try to make corners. You shouldn't have to do it with this. And I don't think you can, yeah, you can't actually fold it anyways because the, the, the actual LED strip, it's kind of an upgraded model of their previous version. Uh, you'll see in a second that it's actually encased with silicone. So it isn't exactly like a flat, you know, exposed LED tape that you can easily bend over itself. So we'll put these off to the side over here. And you do get, I, I think the instructions specify you get like six and four or maybe seven and four or something. I, I remember the number was a little bit off in terms of what we actually have in the box. We actually have, looks like eight and four. So you do get a few of extra of the straight bits just in case you need them. Then we have the LED strips. Now, again, like I said, you have two of these and they run, <laughs> apparently you also have foam that likes to kind of jump out at you. The, uh, again, it starts at the bottom corner. You can choose either corner of the TV and either run it this way or run it that way, you know, and uh, get your full coverage of the TV. And if you have any kind of runoff at that, t at that ending corner there, you just kind of clip it off. Not kind of you do. And it is specified on the tape where your cut marks are so that you know where you are able to cut without damaging the strip light. And pretty much it's every, let's say two and a half inches. And then you do have an end cap here as well that comes off. And then if you do have to cut it, that just pops right back on uh, to give you a nice end. 
of the strip. Both of these strips are USB and they are going to connect into the module that actually controls everything, which is the next thing we come to here. So this is the Neo HDMI 2.0 hub or we're gonna call it a hub. It's controller, hub, however you wanna look at it. But this is what's actually controlling the HDMI lights. What you have is an HDMI input, which is actually the second one here, uh, HDMI input, and then you have an HDMI output. Again, this is HDMI 2.0, so you do have up to 60 hertz. Uh, so you're coming out of your receiver, or if you just have a single unit, like a Blu-ray player or a cable box or a Xbox, whatever your scenario is, whatever cable would normally go to the TV, would go to this box. And then the output will come out of this box and go to your TV. So it's just pretty much piggybacking off of the HDMI connection between your source and the TV. And then it uses that data, it monitors that video that's heading, sending to the TV and, and pays attention to the edges of the picture. And then mimics the color of the, you know, everywhere across the edge behind the TV on the LED tape. So it looks like the picture is just simply running off and onto the wall. It's just color, it's not the actual picture, but it helps give you kind of a, again, it, it's, it's, it's more of an effect than just an ambient backlight. You have an ambient backlight that's also interactive to what's on the screen and also makes for great visuals if you have like an animation running across the screen and it'll go with music for party mode or something like that, then the color's gonna be all over the place and you're gonna enjoy this a lot. And as I mentioned, there's two USB connections here. You got two different LED strips. That's gonna be these two USB ports on the back. They are labeled side and bottom. That's where I say they start in the corner. One goes up the side. That's referred to as a side and across the top. And the bottom one starts running across the bottom and goes up the other side. So side, bottom. And then you have your DC input right here, which is gonna be for the power as well as a reset button in case everything just is going crazy for some weird reason, you gotta hit the reset button. Now they do give you an HDMI connection, or excuse me, they give you an HDMI cable. This is cool. They don't always give you an HDMI cable for stuff like this. So it's always nice to see that the HDMI cable really isn't that long. So you do have to consider that. If you, you know, in terms of placement of this, if you're running an HDMI cable to the TV and the box is gonna be hidden behind the TV, let's say you just slap a piece of Velcro or something like that to stick it to the back of the TV and it's being hung on the wall or just, you know, sitting on a TV stand somewhere, whatever the case may be, if it's coming from here to the TV, you don't have to worry about the length of this. This is just fine. It's kind of like using a, uh, one of the Roku boxes or anything like that and just hiding them behind the TV. If you are going to install this more towards like by the Blu-ray player or something like that, and it's gonna go into that in the long run, it's gonna be coming from this to your TV, you'll probably use this to go between this and the source and your longer HDMI cable, which you're on your own for, to your TV. And that leaves us with the final item, which is the power cable here. It is just a simple DC power cable with a power brick. Uh, it is a little bulky and it, so it's, you gotta keep that in mind depending on what cables you, or, or ports you have free on your surge protector or whatever, whatever else you're plugging this into. But that's it, it's relatively simple. You are gonna wanna probably download the app for configuration purposes, so you can get it started at least and then get it connected with your Alexa or Google speakers. That way you can control it with your voice, turn it off on, and probably also change some of the modes as well. So as you can tell, the overall setup is relatively simple. You're gonna have this done in no time at all. So how about we take a look and see what it looks like? What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up on a TV right now. I think we're gonna do a 65 inch TV. I, I'm, I'm going off of, uh, I don't know which kit we have, I think. Yep, 65, no. Yes, 65 inch TV. We're gonna put this on a 65 inch TV in one of the demo rooms. And then once we're done installing this, we're gonna show you what it looks like. And we'll pair it against maybe uh, some kind of a nice 4K video off of YouTube. Okay, so we have it set up. Currently we have it running on a 65 inch model that we put up on the wall. You're looking at right now what we have YouTube up on the screen. This is looking pretty good. I mean, everything right there looks fantastic. It's matching for the most part. It's slightly off, but that's only because we kind of misplaced the LED strips ever so slightly on the back of the TV. So it's slightly off. So if we had adjusted that just slightly uh, to more of what the diagram in the instructions showed, it wouldn't uh, be off. But for the most part, it's pretty accurate. It's pretty, I mean, I think these squares are a perfect opportunity to be able to line it up to see how well it fits. I mean, it's so, so close. We can adjust that on the back by sliding the tape around a little bit because uh, we have easy access based on how we installed it. So that's not a problem. Unfortunately, there is no option to adjust this in the app to fine tune up, down, left, right, or anything like that. The app simply allows you to determine the before mentioned left 
or right configuration of which corner you started at when installing the LED strips. But immediately it recognizes them both. Uh, the app has some Chinese in there, so you gotta get around that. I mean, it's, it, it's English and Chinese, but some of it can be confusing. For some reason, it does ask you for your address. We could not figure out why that was absolutely necessary. We didn't like that at all. Uh, so you can set up multiple families, multiple homes on a single app, supposedly, but I still don't see why that's necessary. So we just kind of randomly selected something as we were typing numbers in because, well, we couldn't read it anyways because the addresses that popped up, or we were assuming addresses, was all in Chinese. So that's the only thing we ran into that was completely in Chinese. Uh, which was a little bit awkward. But beyond that, we we're able to get the strip added and onto the Wi Fi network, and now we have full control. Now, the app has two different options, uh, or at least the, the main screen uh, under video, which is the video tab, you have two different options to choose from. You have screen and music. Screen is going to be video, obviously, what you're looking at now. Then you have music. Now, if we do that, it's actually just responding to the noise as you can see in the room so if we were playing music you know let's say i'm just rapping right now this is my beat and i'm laying it down telling you about this really great tv the lights are responding to it now mind you i'm about i'd say 28 to 30 feet away from the screen right now as i'm doing this so it's picking it up quite well of course if you're in a new noisy environment that may or may not have effect on things but it does look fun. Uh, the effect is nice. We can put it back onto screen where it's matching everything that's on the HDMI. You have the option of weak, normal, or high for its response rate. And then you have, of course, the ability to control the brightness. I can take it all the way down. Um, let's say if I feel like it's too bright, I just want to focus on some of the colors, not so much that big splash running around. Uh, if I want to take it up a little bit more, I can just keep on going. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to keep it at 100% so you can see what it looks like. Going back to the app, you have additional tab options in here, one of which is called Scene. And a lot of LED lighting options give you different scenes and effects you can choose from. This does the same thing. You can choose Rainbow, which is a pretty darn cool effect right there. I mean, it just, the, just that initial start is impressive, and that'll impress your friends if you're like, hey, check out what I can do. But just the general effect as an ambient kind of, you know, lighting condition for get-togethers, parties, and things like that where you don't have music, you just want to, or you just want chill, kind of low-level music playing, and you just want some kind of a nice relaxing strobe through, all, or not strobe, but just a, a fade out uh, through all the various different colors in a rainbow forma uh, formation. This is fantastic. It's absolutely nailing the effect, and it looks great on the wall. Now we can go to fire. We weren't really too happy with this one. This one's kind of goofy. Uh, it's probably not something you're gonna make use of. It looks more like a, you know, kind of a, a winning screen at a casino, like you just hit the jackpot more than anything else. Now we got read. Read is just a relaxing white screen. You just wanna turn off all the effects and go to that. Fireworks just gives you this weird little random chase running around the screen. You have star, which is kind of a little spacey, weird little stardust looking thing going across the screen. You have drip. This is considered drip, which is just another random chase. You have particle, which is kind of similar to space, but with m more colors, or kind of more like the firework, but more of a, a chase version of it. You have flow, which is just flowing around. Uh, just a, a nice little effect. You might be able to change the color, it looks like. Yes, you can change the color. So I'll do that now and just kind of give it some red in there. Spin the color around, give it some green. So you can, it, I mean, you can see right now the refresh of it. It is quick, it is fast, it is hitting the screen really fast. And from the, uh, and this, what I'm on, by the way, is the third tab called color. But they also have some shortcuts at the bottom. You can just do yellow, purple, and choose whatever you wish. And then you can also bring down the brightness if you want as well from that screen. But we're going to go back to scene. Uh, it looks like scenes are the only options where you have control over the color and not all scenes have color so if like we're in read it's just going to give you white if we try to go to the color screen it's going to say the current color mode does not support the color adjustment which is unfortunate because you know what if you just want a solid color now back to effects uh we were under flow let's go to ball this is ball just a bouncing ball that's bouncing up and down a basketball it's a little bit of an effect or you can kind of look at it as a um Maybe a Pong, but you know, Pong, you can actually pull off if you just have Pong on the screen. That'll actually look, kind of look cool because the lights will probably follow the paddles back and forth. This is Swing, which is kind of a, this is almost like Pong, <laughs> the opposite of the other one. Uh, now you have Breathe. So Breathe, now your two common ones is like Flow and Breathe. Uh, you have that on here and Rainbow. So this is nice. Here you can also change the color if you want and go with a different color if you feel that white is just kind of boring for the breathe effect. 
or maybe red, you know, for that kind of dramatic appeal. And now all of this, while I'm uh, doing all of this, uh, it is important to point out that all the lights are in the room, uh, or on. The, the, we have an LED light that's uplit that's running all the way around the room through the crown molding that's kind of giving a nice, really bright ambient lighting effect throughout the whole theater. And then we have a center light fixture that is also 360 degrees and fills in everything in the middle. It is decently bright in here. And you can see that that does not have an effect on these LEDs whatsoever. But back to the effects under scene. The very last scene is called pure. And it's just pure white, it looks like. Now here I might absolutely stand, correct myself here, or I might be stand corrected here by this effect. Um, because if I go to color, now it does allow me into color. So you can change it and just say, I want it to be just red. So this is nice. So if you don't want any of the other stuff, let's say you're watching a movie and it becomes distracting, Oh, let's get rid of that. Uh, if it becomes distracting, you don't have to worry about it. You can just switch over to pure and change it to whatever color that you want this to be. And it'll update immediately. And so you got red, orange, green. Again, you have a full color wheel. You can change this to whatever you want. So what we're gonna do now, now that I've gone through all this, I'm gonna switch this over to screen, which is in video mode. And we're gonna watch a video and that's going to demonstrate its abilities to be able to keep up with everything on screen. Now, again, this is on normal. This is a normal setting in terms of refresh rate and keeping up with all the colors. So right now you just have a drone flying around a jungle or a mountain scene. Uh, the LEDs are keeping up with everything on the screen. I'm gonna switch this to high. So it's a little bit more, and really this is a, just a refresh rate in terms of how quickly these colors are changing. So you might find that it's just, it's a little too quick, too blinky or something when it goes in and out of dark to light scenes. If, you, if so, you can always bring it down to weak. Um, but I mean, just looking at this, this, this looks really, really, really good. This is fun. Of course, also on top of this all, we're hoping that the camera is actually picking up a good representation of this because not, you know, the, the actual final result doesn't always look perfect to your camera the way it sees it compared to what your eyes are seeing. But this looks good. I mean, this is fantastic. In fact, I mean, that's pretty darn accurate right there. This is really nice. And it's, you know, your eye, it's, some might see, see this as being distracting. Some might find this as just really adding to what you're looking at on the screen, allowing you to have more of an immersive effect. And again, if this is a little distracting, you can bring it down. So I'll cut this down to 50%. So this is 50% brightness. It's not as bright, so it's not glaring at you or anything like that, which is also a good thing. You wanna set this to whatever, you know, kind of balance it with the brightness that's on the screen. Just mind you that if you turn it down, the brightness down, you're not gonna have as much of an aura going around the screen, so it's not gonna be as much of an in-your-face effect. So as you turn that brightness down, we'll take it down to 25, you're gonna see it's just gonna be less noticeable running around the, the screen. But at the same time, less distracting. So again, it all depends on your brightness of the screen, as well as the brightness of the room as well. Play around with it to see what's most relaxing or, or at least comfortable uh, to your eyes. It doesn't necessarily have to be relaxing because maybe you're, you're actually having a party or something like that and you're just having a blast. So there you have it. You have the awesome LightMe HDMI 2.0 Neo color strip or color or just really LED backlight ambient lighting kit for TVs. Again, you can go all the way up to 90 inches. This has a lot of flexibility to it. It looks really nice. It has a lot of effects. It, it, it's HDMI 2.0, so you're getting 4K up to 60 frames per second. I'm assuming their next one's gonna have a pass-through of up to 120, I can only guess, uh, because you're gonna wanna, or at least they're gonna wanna keep up with the industry and everything that's out there in the market, you know, because 4K at 60, that's not gonna be modern, or at least keeping up with everything for too long. But eventually, they're gonna wanna go up to 120 or higher maybe when the time comes. But for now, this is good. It's keeping up with modern day technology for the most part, and it just looks really cool. I just love how it's following the letters right there on the screen on the Tech Talk logo. So again, LightMe HDMI 2.0 Neo Backlight Ambient Light Kit for TVs up to 90 inches or as small as whatever size TV you have. And the prices depended upon which one of two kits that you purchase. Each one covers a range of sizes and TV, so make sure that the range that you choose is the range that your TV 
falls into. We're gonna have links about this in the description below, so that way you can shop around and see what the best price is and what the general average price is just at all. So check out the description, and as always, if you like what you've seen here, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that, subs that subscribe button, follow us. We have tons of videos coming. Definitely use those comments and chat with us and chat with each other. If you have any comments about this, if you have one of these, or you have comments about how this compares against something else that you might have from another brand, absolutely hit those comments and share what's on your mind. And as always, we thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. If you wanna stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button, click it. You're gonna to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button, click it.